by the disobedience of one man. Sin entered the world. And with sin came death. But through the obedience of another, men could live again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it but rather that the world through him might be saved. Nearly five billion do not yet know the love of Christ. Who will tell them how will they hear before it's too late? What if? What if you had a friend who died without knowing Jesus as their personal savior? What if he or she went to hell? What if one day you received a letter in the mail from beyond? A letter from hell. A letter from your friend in the flames of eternal torment. The following is a dramatic presentation. It was written by a fictitious high school student named Josh to a friend named Zach. Although Zach had every opportunity to tell Josh about Jesus, he didn't. They were best friends. They played soccer together, they went to classes together, they partied together, they shared their lives with each other. But there was one thing Zach held back from Josh. His personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The rest of the story is simple and sad. A few too many beers. A tragic drive home. A crash. A death. A funeral. A letter. Here is that letter in its entirety. A letter from hell. Dear Zach, I died today. A lot different than I expected. You see, I always thought dying would bring me into a world that's foggy and hazy. But this place is crystal clear. It's even more real than my life on Earth. I can think. I can talk. I can even feel. Right after the wreck, I could feel my spirit leaving my body. It was the weirdest thing, Zach. I thought I heard you screaming out to me, man. I must have been just imagining things. At first, I was just standing in line, getting registered, I guess. They asked me for my name and began to look in this thing they called the Book of Life. I guess they couldn't find it though, because this huge angel standing next to me grabbed me by the arm and started dragging me away. I was terrified. I had no idea what was going on. I asked the angel where he was taking me, but he didn't answer. So I asked him again. Finally, he told me that only those whose names were written in the book of life would enter into heaven, and the rest would be contemned to hell forever. Man, I was scared. The angel threw me into some kind of holding cell, where I've been sitting and thinking for a long, long time. Do you want to know what I've been thinking about? I've been thinking about you. Zach, you're a Christian. You told me so yourself. I mean, we talked about it three different times today. 
Kelly brought it up, and you laughed it off. Coach Adams brought it up, and you changed the subject. I mean, it came up right before the wreck. Well, the question I can't get out of my mind is this, Zach. Why haven't you ever told me about how to become a Christian? I mean, you say you're my friend. But if you really were, you would have told me about this Jesus and told me how to escape this terrible place that I'm headed for. I can feel my heart pounding in my chest. The angels who have been chosen to cast me into hell are coming down the hallway. I can hear their footsteps. I've heard of this hell, Zach. They call it the lake of fire. I can't stand it, Zach. I'm terrified. No, the angels are at the door. Oh no. No! They're coming in and they're pointing at me. They're grabbing me and carrying me out of the room. I can already smell the burning sulfur and brimstone. I can see the edge of the cliff where hell burns. This is it. I am without hope. We're coming closer. 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 My heart is bursting with fear. They're holding me over the flames. I'm down forever. This is it. They have thrown me in. Fire. Pain. Hell. Why, Zach? Why didn't you ever tell me about Jesus? Jesus. Signed. Signed. Your friend. Josh. It's tough to drive down the expressway and see all the thousands of people who pass us. To drive by all the homes or, as I did yesterday, to fly over your community and see community after community, subdivision after subdivision filled with people who are going to hell. Millions of people that used to live on the Earth's surface are down there now suffering because they made a wrong decision. Think about the people with whom you work. And as the Bible would command us, think about yourself. Life goes like a paper. God does not want one person lost in this place. The message about hell may not be politically correct. It may in this day of postmodern confusion be something that creates bad public relations. But it is essential to understanding why Jesus came and what Jesus did and why it matters. Isn't it exciting to know that the will of God is not just a cloud, it is a detailed thing, and you don't have to just walk around in a fog all your life. But we fool ourselves if we do not face hell seriously. We have purpose. We have a reason to glorify God on the face of the earth by taking the gospel to every creature. It is not a vain job. It is not a vain task. He will do it and desires to accomplish it through you. The name of God is going to be great among the nations from the rising of the sun even to its setting. He is going to do it. Now, church, he has invited you to participate in the joy of the harvest. What a day it will be for those who left houses and lands and this and that and everything to serve their Lord on the foreign field. And what a day it will be for those like you who helped put them there.
you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation.